How's it going everyone and welcome back. I've made a pouch to contain my cook kit for the upcoming canoe trip and I'm going to show you how to make one. So to make one you're going to need some of this material. Um, it's a sort of a Cordura and water resistant fabric. I use it to make the cases for the fire trough so if you don't know what it looks like buy a fire trough. <laughs> And I think you're going to need a sewing machine. Um, a lot of people do these things and say you can do them perfectly uh, well by hand. Well, you can. I just think it would take you um, a long, long time and be pretty difficult. You don't necessarily need a really, really heavy duty one like this. Um, any sort of household machine will do because we're not going to be sewing really thick bits of material. But uh, yeah, some sort of a sewing machine, I think, uh, would be the key to success here. This is my cook kit. I've got a 230 gram gas bottle here and my 750ml stainless steel um, billy pot here from Wild Camping International. It's a great size. It's got the side handles but it's also got the uh, carry handle as well for uh, suspending it. And inside here I've just got a simple gas ring that I keep. Um, I usually put some sort of um, tissue paper or kitchen paper in there to stop it rattling but uh, just for now for demonstration purposes that's how I've got it and the nice thing about this is I was thinking about making the cook kit so that it would stack like that inside the pouch but when I played around with it I see that sitting this on top the gas bottle fits really neatly between these two little um, holding arms for the uh, the suspension arm here and that keeps it all nice and neatly together so when it goes in the pouch I'm going to have the gas bolt here above the um, billy can. So what I did first of all was measure the diameter of the bottom of my gas cylinder here and also how high I wanted the whole thing to be and you come up that you actually need a circular piece of material like that and a rectangular bit and to work out the dimensions that you need it's a really simple calculation I'll show you now. To work out the measurements I measured the diameter of the bottom of the gas canister here and then added a little bit and made about a 10 mil extra bit round the edges to allow for folding and also that I've got to sew this bit of um, the bottom into the sort of cylindrical structure above it. So once I'd made this circle there's a simple calculation which will work out how big the not to scale the rectangular piece of material I'll need that will sit on top of here as a cylinder and if my radius here is 6.5 centimeters I can work out what the circumference of this is and therefore the length of the uh, rectangular bit I need and the simple calculation for that is 2 pi r pi being 3.14 radius for the r is 6.5 and 2 at the beginning so it's 2 times 3.14 times 6.5 and if I put that into my calculator, that's 2 times 3.14 times 6.5. Okay, that's 40.8 centimeters, near as 41 centimeters across. So this piece here needs to be 41 centimeters, and that'll be just right for it to sit on top to be sewn. 
uh, on top of the cylinder here. And I've chosen for my cook kit with the gas cylinder and my little pot that needs to be 27 centimeters tall because I'm going to allow for a hem at the top with a drawstring in there. So with those measurements in mind I've cut out a circle and also a rectangular bit of material which will be hopefully tall enough to have a big enough hem in it to make a draw cord to, to do up the top. The first thing I'm going to do is make a large hem which will be on the top and that will be sufficient enough to put the draw cord in which I'm going to use I think some uh, three mil paracord so I'm making that I'm not measuring anything really apart from the, the main measurements I did to cut the thing out but that's about just shy of uh, well it's about 20 mil hem there and I'll do that all the way across so that's the hem done that will eventually contain the draw cord in there what I'm going to do now is turn it inside out and make a stitch along this side and then I'll end up with a cylinder like that and it'll be ready to sew in the base. A really important bit here is that when you are sewing this uh, particular bit is not to sew it completely up in this direction over the hem otherwise you'll seal the holes where the draw cords have got to go through so you want to start your stitching about here so that the draw cords can still uh, go through the uh, hemmed bit I'm just doing this last bit by hand so that I don't go too far into the uh, hem there, good. Then I'll just go reverse to tie it off. Right, so now I've made a cylinder with the hemmed end for the draw cord at one end and then just the sort of rough cut bit at the bottom. And it's timed now so in this little uh, disc here. And it's important obviously <laughs> to get things uh, the right way round. And the way I just remember it is as long as it's inside out, just go good side to good side. So that's good side to good side. And that's um, an easy way to do it. It's a bit fiddly this bit. Um, I find that if I start here where the side join is, that that gets a little bit of the more difficult bit out of it. Just fold the little um, extra bit to the side and you want to just go around very gently doing about five or six stitches at a time and just teasing the disc into the edge as you go just sewing about five mils in and eventually you will get some gathering because you can't sew this into this without having some crinkling um, but as you get towards that I'll show you in close up but you just end up having to just do little folds like that as you get towards those sort of final stages of the circle. It makes it a tiny bit uh, noticeable if you were uh, to be picky and look at it at the end to see um, that there's a, a couple of creases here and there. But other than that, I, I can't see a way around it. And after all, it's a bushcraft uh, item and it's meant to look a bit rugged and I made it. So I'm happy. <laughs> so I'll bring the camera and we'll have a look at the uh, close up whilst I do this last bit of uh, stitching here. Okay, so I've made those first few stitches and I'm just going to go very, very gently around and as I go, I'm just going to bring this inner disc here just to the edge as I, as I sew it round. It's a bit fiddly, but um, it turns out nice when you've uh, turned it the right way around. So here we go. Always begin the first stitch doing that manually. So I get to here and then tease it round a little bit few stitches at a time here to tease it round and then on we go you just have to pause every so often get it right take your time with this bit and you see you've got the first little crinkle going in there which I'm not too bothered about 
these things will crinkle up as you go around the corner and just let the foot ride over it. There we are. And you just have to keep repositioning it, feeding it until and that's about three quarters of the way there. And it's a little bit more fiddly if you get towards the end. If it does um, go the way you don't want it to go, so you just lift the foot, do a bit of repositioning, and be quite sort of determined with it. There we go. Then bring the foot down again. And around we go, and we're just about there. And then we are back to where we started. So we'll let these bits cross over. And do a couple of back stitches. And this is the point when you turn it inside out, it'll be the slightly untidy bit, but as I said, I'm not really caring too much about that. Always makes me nervous about that bit, but it's it's not too bad. Um, well, there you go. It looks uh, a bit of a dog's dinner at the moment. And that corner bit will always be uh, a very difficult bit to get completely tidy. But I think once turned in uh, the right way around, um, it looks surprisingly okay. So what I'm going to do f before I um, turn it the right way around is put in my draw cord here with a little toggle to uh, secure it. So I've got some three mil paracord here. I've sealed the end so it doesn't fray out of the safety pin and I'm just putting a safety pin on there so that I can feed it through the hemmed bit of my pouch here. So in it goes. I'll just feed it through. So I'm gonna pull a good length through and then Chop that off and we'll trim it to the right size in a minute. So the moment of truth, I've threaded the draw cord through. I haven't put a little locker on it yet, but I'll do that uh, afterwards and we'll turn this the right way around. Just tease your thumb or finger into the hem of this circle at the bottom just to get all those folds out. And there you go. As I said, it'll never be perfect because of the, um, the fact that you're folding in on a circle and there'll be these sort of crinkly bits. But there, you've got a, a pretty reasonable circular base which uh, will sit nicely rather than just... Um, hemming together two bits of uh, <laughs> the material. So I much prefer just spending that little bit of extra time getting these circular bases in. And there we go. We'll see if things fit. So in with the cook pot. And my gas bottle. stiff material but, but that'll do me nicely so I've gotten these little stopper sort of toggle things that I'm going to put on and that uh, will then allow me to trim off the ends and finish it off I'm really pleased with that. There's my little cook kit. Doesn't matter now if uh, it gets sooty or whatever, I can just throw it in here and it's not getting the rest of my kit dirty. It's got a really nice little sort of pull toggle. I'm gonna actually, good idea, whilst, whilst you're there, I'll just tie that off. Cinch that up. 
And there we are. <laughs> Gas bottle. Cook kit. And my pouch. Well, it's a short video. I hope that's what you like to see sometimes. It's not wild camping. I'm hopefully going out camping uh, on Monday nights, Saturday night now. And uh, yeah, just a little bit of a project. The only thing that takes the time really is just measuring out and cutting out. The rest of it is pretty plain sailing. You do need a sewing machine, I'm afraid, but I hope that's given you a little bit of guidance and I hope you make one. Why don't you um, email me with your examples if you do uh, make one of these. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again.